So the topic of this little uh, presentation or whatever it is, discussion, lecture, is informal fallacies. Now a fallacy is an error in reasoning. An informal fallacy in logical theory is an error in reasoning that is informal. <laughs> that means that it's an error in reasoning that cannot be defined in terms of pure abstract logical forms. It involves content and something more specific than form. So we call it an informal fallacy. And you'll have material to read and study on informal fallacies. Uh, it's an important branch of the informal part of logical theory. So in an informal fallacy, someone is making an argument and they're, create, and they're committing an error in reasoning, but it's an error in reasoning that has to be explained uh, not in terms of pure form, but in terms of content. And so we're going to, Mark and I are going to demonstrate a few of these uh, informal fallacies. Mark's going to make one up and then he's going to ask me which fallacy he's made up. Yeah. I want to emphasize that the fallacy is, as he says, that line of reasoning, but they're oftentimes psychologically persuasive. And there's a lot, an infinite number of bad lines of reasoning, but some of them are so common and are out in the streets so often and are found so commonly that they're even given special names. So that's going to be our task to be able to identify the common fallacies that really do fake a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just toss a couple your way. Okay. Okay, imagine this argument. I come to you and I say, I really like chocolate. I mean, I love chocolate. And fresh tuna, I don't know if you've ever had fresh tuna, but fresh tuna is wonderful. A fine tomato sauce is great. Good warm bread is wonderful. I like chocolate, tuna, warm bread, tomato sauce. Therefore, I would like a chocolate tuna pizza. And uh, that is a classic, that's an example of a classic logical informal fallacy called the fallacy of composition. In the fallacy of composition, one reasons that since the parts of some whole have a certain attribute or property, the whole will also have that same attribute or property. And so what you have reasoned is that since each of these parts tastes good to you, tuna tastes good to you, chocolate tastes good to you, it does. bread tastes good to you, and uh, tomato sauce tastes good to you, then you've reasoned that if you put it all together in the form of a pizza and bake it in the oven, that that whole thing will taste good to you too. So that commits the fallacy of composition when there's, when the logic that goes from the parts having the property to the whole is not good reasoning. I think you're right. Uh -huh. Well, let me try again then. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this one's kind of similar to that. Um, I teach at Bellevue College. Bellevue College is about 30 years old as a college. Therefore, each of the individual buildings at Bellevue College is 30 years old. And that is a good example yes, it's of good. the informal fallacy known as the fallacy of division. That's the fa in a fallacy of division, you reason that since the whole of something has a certain attribute or property, then each of the parts must have it too. So since the whole is 30 years old, you're reasoning each part of the whole is 30. Each building on campus is going to be 30 if the whole campus is 30. Yeah, and I guess you're right, that would be false. The campus may be 30 years old, but it may be we have a new building. This has been added last year. Yeah. Okay. So that would be committing the fallacy of division. So there are a lot of classic examples of uh, fallacies uh, like these. A uh, classic example of a fallacy of division is uh, the average American family has 2.3 children, and that's a statistical fact, and therefore we reason that the Smith family must have 2.3 children. That would be a fallacy of division. Okay. Or uh, Joe is a great musician, Fred's a great musician, Sam's a great musician, Ted's a great musician. So, Therefore, if we put them together and form a band out of them, they'll be a great band. And that'd be composition. That'd be, yes, the fallacy of composition. Just right. because each is individually good doesn't necessarily follow that as a whole, they'll be a good band. So we we would need more uh, reasoning than that to conclude that they'll make a good band. So these are fallacies, and do you want to try another one? 
I've been reading the papers and there's somebody uh, who's in Congress, a Senator Jones. Turns out Senator Jones smokes cigarettes, oh, beats my. his wife, oh, and doesn't recycle his plastic water bottles. Oh, my God. Therefore, we should totally reject his position on taxation. So his argument for tax on taxation. Bad. It's got to be bad it because must be bad. he doesn't recycle. Because he's a, a violent person and he smokes cigarettes. Well, this is an example of the fallacy known as the ad hominem fallacy. A lot of these fallacies were cataloged by Aristotle in the fourth century BC when he was writing some of the first logic books to survive in history. And he wrote a book called Sophistical Refutations, where he tried to catalog all the different fallacies or errors in reasoning that people might make that could deceive others and trick them into accepting a conclusion when they shouldn't. Uh, but uh, Aristotle was the first to catalog fallacies in a book. And during the Middle Ages, a lot of these fallacies were given Latin names. And this fallacy in the Middle Ages was named by logicians the ad hominem fallacy, which is Latin for what? Against the man. Against, against the, the man person. or against the person. So I guess we're, uh, we're homonyms? We're homonyms. We're man. And uh, in an ad hominem fallacy, one argues against an argument on the grounds that the arguer is in some way a bad person. So one argues uh, don't accept the argument or don't accept the conclusion because the arguer is a bad person. And that's called an ad hominem fallacy. Now, why is it a fallacy to attack someone personally, to try to assassinate their character or put them down personally in response to an argument they're given? Well, it's going to be given. irrelevant whether the person's a bad guy or not as to whether his position, say, on taxation is good. He could actually be the world's worst person, but actually have a decent position on taxation. So if I attack the person, go against the man, rather than the argument or his argument or his, um, or his position, I'm not really attacking the position. And this would be an irrelevant uh, line of attack. What I need to do is explain why his position on taxation is bad. Mm -hmm. I would not be guilty of that fallacy. Right. So, so if someone gives an argument for a conclusion, and instead of responding to their argument, we attack the person, we're committing a fallacy, an ad hominem fallacy. And another thing to add is that sometimes a bad person might give a good argument. You mm -hmm. know, just because a person's a bad person in some sense doesn't mean their arguments bad. Yeah. And this is the most, probably one of the most common fallacies you'll hear on talk radio, on both sides of the dial. You just hear people constantly saying, hey, the, my, the guy I don't like, he's a horrible person, and therefore his position's bad. You know, we really need to take a look at the position, understand the position, and grapple with it, and not get sidetracked by looking at the arguer, him or herself. Yeah. So study the informal fallacies, and it's an important logis logical skill to be able to identify a fallacy when it occurs in someone's argument, and to be able to point it out to them graciously and respectfully mm -hmm. and nicely, right? But uh, look at the examples of the different types of fallacies, and, and you'll notice that when you study fallacies, sometimes someone's fallacious argument might fit in more than one, into more than one category too. There are arguments where it's not clear whether it's this fallacy or this fallacy and it may be that it satisfies the definition of both types of fallacies. Sometimes the distinctions between the fallacies aren't real clear-cut. Sure. Yeah. So, so thank you.